Hey everyone, Dr. Crayhay here. This week I've asked you to complete an analysis of variance for your second exam. Now the steps to do this in R are a bit more complicated than we're used to, so I decided to record this video to kind of help you out with that. So of course the first thing I did was uh, download the data set from Canvas, saved to my desktop, and then imported that into our commander. If you look at the data set, you can see it has a couple of variables here. Um, First, we have just an ID giving me a number for each of them. We have each participant's debt amount, their starting salary, and which degree they got. We've got three different groups there. We've got PhD holders, PsyD holders, and then uh, just overall our entire sample. So again, this is from an, actually, uh, an actual published paper. So if you're interested in the real numbers here, you can go online, download that paper, or send me an email and I'll get you a copy. So what you're going to be doing uh, is comparing debt by the kind of degree people got. So you're going to compare PhD, PsyD, and then I want you to compare the overall level of debt to see if those two degrees are different than the sample as a whole. In this example, I'll compare salary and see what happens. One thing you have to do in this exam is write this up in APA style. So here I have an example, APA style write up for you. Um, a one-way analysis of variance was performed to determine if differences exist in the number of yellow M&Ms provided in three different bag types, plain, peanut, and peanut butter. Levine's test showed violations of the equality of variance assumption, p-value equals 0 0.010. So uh, again, this is telling us uh, if the equality of variances across groups is similar. In this case, it is not. So we had a violation. We had to correct for that in the data. Results suggest that differences exist, comma, F. Now you're going to do degrees of freedom. Here, I'll show you how to get that. This is your actual F statistic. Your exact p-value, unless it's so small, then it's that it's less than 0 0.001. So always give equals unless it's very, very tiny. Partial eta squared 0.64. This is your effect size. You always want to report effect size along with your p-value. So hopefully you're writing some of these things down. So overall model results are given first, but then remember we have to see which of those groups are different. So it's not enough to say there are differences. We want to know exactly where the differences are. So here we start to report post hoc tests. Plain bags had fewer, we give mean and standard deviation, yellow M&Ms than bags of peanut butter, mean standard deviation, and then the p-value from that post hoc test. So where do all these numbers come from? How do I get them? So going back to our data, uh, you can get Levine's test by going to statistics, variances, Levine's. Now the only factor you can choose is group um, I'm going to do salary, but again, you'll do debt. I'm going to choose the center around the mean. So then it gives me my p-value group, uh, degrees of freedom, my f-value probability. So that's my p-value. It's 0.1. It is not statistically significant, which means I have met this assumption. Uh, this basically tells you the same kinds of things that skew, kurtosis, outliers. It's all kind of the same thing. This is just a slightly different way of doing it. If you don't have any problems with skew, kurtosis, you don't have any outliers, your Levine's test should be good to go. But that's what number you would report there. Levine's test showed no violations, comma, p equals 0 0.103. To run our ANOVA statistics, means one-way ANOVA. Now it's going to give us some options here. Of course groups, there's only one option. Again, you'll pick debt. I'm going to choose salary. So that will give us overall, are there any differences? To know where those differences are, we need to check this pairwise box. We could change the name of this model if we want. We don't have to, it's not important. So I'm just going to hit OK. Now here's where it gets kind of complicated. So you have to kind of scroll up. Um, here's where I did the Levine's test, scroll down a little bit. Here's our overall model results. So here's what it's telling us, degrees of freedom uh, between degrees of freedom error, sum of squares between error, mean squared our F statistic, and this is our p-value. So remember earlier I said, 
always report the exact p, so here you would do p equals 0 0.001. So we have a difference here. Uh, we also need to know our effect size, so that's where it can be a little bit complicated. So I'm going to pause the video here and pull up Excel to make some calculations a little bit easier. Okay, so we've got uh, just about everything we need to report the overall model results, but we need our effect size. So with ANOVA, we use what's called eta squared. It has that little weird N symbol. And you just take the between group sum of squares, which is this that I've highlighted, over total sum of squares. So the problem here is that it doesn't give us total sum of squares. Uh, it just gives us between and then within or group and residuals as it says here. Uh, so we have to do just a little bit of calculation. So what I'm going to do is just pull Excel in. I'm going to copy the group or the between sum of squares. I'm just going to stick that into Excel the error or within. I'm going to do the same thing there. Just paste that in. Uh, now to get total we just do equals. Uh, you can do this a couple different ways. I'll just click here plus click here. So we've got between up top. I can just uh, type these in here real quick. Between within and total. So that's what you've probably been seeing in your textbook. That's what you'll see uh, in um, reported articles. The other thing that's kind of strange about R here is that it's giving us scientific notation. So you'll note if you click here, you can go up and you see this giant number. So Excel knows what that means even if you don't. Now to get eta squared, which is our effect size, just do equals between group sum of squares divided by total. Now remember we had to calculate that total. So again we get you know a weird kind of um, scientific notation here and this time it just gives us our formula. So you could do a couple of different things. You could copy and you could paste the numbers only and it'll tell you okay your effect size is 0 0.0089. I would report that as uh, 0 0.01 probably to round to two decimals. You can also change the way that Excel shows you these numbers. So if you just, I'm just going to click uh, on this uh, effect size here in scientific notation, right click. And again, if you're on a Mac, I'm not quite sure what the alternative is, but format cells on a PC and you'll get a dialog box pop up. Under number, the number tab on the far left there, click on number and go to two decimal places click OK and it'll tell you the same thing I said a second ago. 0 0.01 is your effect size. So looking at that, before we go any further, how do we type this up? So you can say a one-way analysis of variance was performed to determine if differences exist in, I'm just going to copy that because you can use the same thing, paste that, exist in salary by type of degree earned. Now skipping to oh, earn. Levine's test. I'm just going to copy that sentence and edit it to fit my specific situations. Levine's test showed no violations of the equality of variance assumption. And again, if we scroll back up where it says Levine's test, Levine's test is right here. Our P is 103. P equals 0.103. So far so good. Now results suggest, just copy that right here. We'll come back to it. So results suggest that differences exist. If we scroll down to our overall model results, so we've got a couple of different things to do here. Let's see if I can make this smaller. Well, okay, well, we'll just do this the best we can. Alright, so here you've got F, 
in parentheses degrees of freedom between degrees of freedom residual. So we've got two comma one four nine four. And again, I'm just copying this from the results right here equals our F statistic is 6.759, round everything except P to two. So our F would be 6.76. Again, zero, zero, 001. This should be a uh, superscript, eta squared, so you can do a couple of different things. This little X with a two up there will do that for you. Our eta squared equals, remember that's what we just calculated, 0 0.01. So what this is telling us is that we do in fact have differences. So we wanted to know are there differences in salary by the type of degree you earned? We're looking at PhD, PsyD, and then overall. We didn't have any uh, violations. We've got our p-value there. We've got our overall model results. It'll be the first box that comes up after you run that ANOVA. And now we have to decide where exactly are those differences. After your ANOVA summary box, you're going to get your mean and standard deviation information, which I'm going to skip for now. We'll come back to it. Now you've got simultaneous tests for general linear hypotheses. So it's doing two key tests. So if you're reading your textbook about different post hocs, that's which one we're using here. Now here's really what we want, where it says linear hypotheses and it's got all of these numbers. What it's doing Here's PhD versus overall. Again, we're comparing salaries. You've got estimate, you've got standard error, you've got your t-value. What we're really paying attention to here is your p-value. So that's the probability less than the absolute value of t column there. So comparing PhD versus overall, these salaries are different. Looking at PsyD versus overall, p-value 0.99, that's not different. Now, PsyD versus PhD, 0.003, that is statistically significantly different. So among our pairwise comparisons, PhD versus overall is different, and PsyD versus PhD is different. Now, for the sake of time, uh, let's just write up what I think is the most important uh, pairwise comparison here, which is PsyD versus PhD. Students contact me all the time saying, uh, I want to get a PsyD, which is fine. You can get a PsyD if you want, but I do know, uh, and we report in that paper, you end up paying quite a bit more money versus a PhD and you get very similar jobs. So just make that decision very carefully. So let's write up that distinction because I think it's important. So we know that it's different. We'll report this p-value in a second. But who earns a higher salary? So go back up to our mean and standard deviation information. It looks like PhD is on average 66,744 a year, PsyD on average 62,623. Uh, so PhDs actually have higher salaries than PsyDs in this data. So let's write that up. Uh, participants with a PhD and then in parentheses I'm going to report mean and standard deviation information. So the overall for PhD salary right here and I'm just going to format that. Remember your dollar signs, commas, make sure it's to two decimals, standard deviation for those PhD holders right here, dollar sign, dollar sign, comma, close that parentheses, had slightly higher salaries than PsyD holders. Again, just going to give mean and standard deviation information. They were looking at about 62, add that comma there. Standard deviation of about 21,000. Delete all that extra. Add that comma. 
So we're saying that um, participants with a PhD had slightly higher salaries than PsyD holders. We'll do at the end, comma, P. We gotta go back down to our pairwise comparison. Again, this is PhD versus overall, PsyD overall, PhD, PsyD's right here, uh, 0.0036, so I'm gonna report that as 0 0.004, P equals 0 0.004. I need to italicize that p value, make sure that standard deviation, mean, uh, your f, all of the, that kind of stuff is italicized, and then you've written up your results in APA style. So again, there are a couple of different things given in the output here. You need to do a little bit of calculation. Um, I think Excel's the easiest way. You can do it by paper if you want. Either way, make sure you submit all of this code up here. And this is your APA style write-up. As always, if you have any questions, send me an email.